Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,468. Well, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I'm doing it because I like that feeling of being uncomfortable now. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I am revved up and so excited to share with you today a very special returning guest here on Cars Yeah, Ross Bentley, calling in from a, a neighbor city of mine, Federal Way, here in the state of Washington. How are you doing, Ross? I am doing excellent. I can almost see you out the window. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll wave. Yeah. I'll wave. Yeah, we actually had a little bit of snow flurries here today, which was very rare for us. Did it snow at your house? Kinda, I guess you could call it that. That 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 white rain. Yeah, white rain. Exactly. I think yeah. next week they say we might get a little more. So yeah. snow tires are going on the car this weekend. We'll see. But for the rest of the country that deals with real snow, they're just laughing right now. So uh, yeah, we're just here with the liquid sunshine. Ross Bentley is a race car driver, a driving coach, a high performance driving instructor. His website, Speed Secrets, no doubt you've heard about it, is a landing page for anyone wanting to learn how to be better and a faster driver. He's raced with some amazing people, including Michael Andretti, or I should say raced against Michael Andretti, Al Unser Jr., Bobby Rahal, Emerson Fittipaldi. Some of these folks have been guests on my show. Paul Tracy, Rick Mears, and many, many others. Ross has driven Indy cars, GT sports cars, and he won the 1998 U.S. Road Racing Championship and the 2003 Daytona 24-hour race. He's passionate about helping others perform better in cars and on tracks, He's written nine books under the Speed Secrets title. They all sit on my shelf and all focus on how to be a better driver. And for a little while there, he had a podcast. I know he's taking a little break, but uh, maybe we can get him back in the game here a little bit. I'll kind of nudge him along. I'll remind you that Ross is going to be one of the key speakers at this year's 25th annual Armadillo Racing Seminar, an event that I spoke at last year, taking place February 8th in Tacoma, Washington. If you want to attend this and uh, meet Ross and a couple of the... uh, incredible people that are going to be speaking. You can go to armadilloracing.com. My friend Andy Collins is putting this on. It's a fantastic event if you love to race. We'll be back in just one moment with Ross, but first, a word from our valued sponsors who make Cars Yeah! possible. Winter's here and things can get a little messy. Rain, snow, salt, mud, dirt, and everything Mother Nature comes up with can hurt the finishes of your vehicles, both inside and out. I'm not worried, though, because I've used Covercraft car covers on my rides since 1975. Today, Covercraft offers you a total solution to vehicle protection. They make the best-fitting, finest-made car covers in the world and offer a wide variety of materials, colors, and options that protect your paint and the interior, too. Live where it's sunny all the time? Lucky! Covercraft dash covers and sunscreens are the best. Got pets? Messy kids? Messy in-laws? Or just messy friends? Covercraft seat covers are the perfect fit and the perfect solution for keeping your seats looking new and don't forget their custom fit floor mats and trunk liners they are a must-have for all your vehicles your cars trucks van or whatever you drive will say thank you and i've got a deal for you during january 2020 you can get 10 percent off plus free shipping on all covercraft products that's right go to covercraft.com and use the code yeah 120 that's y-e-a-h 120 at checkout that's covercraft.com and use the code yeah 120 at checkout hey cars yeah race fans Andy Collins, owner of Armadillo Racing, is a past guest here on Cars Yeah. Last year, I was honored to be a speaker at his high-performance racing seminar. And having attended, I can tell you it's an invaluable learning experience if you love to race. This year marks the 25th anniversary of Armadillo's high-performance racing seminars, and it takes place Saturday, February 8th, in Tacoma, Washington. For your seminar fee, you'll spend a day with four of racing's premier professionals on how to improve your driving and much, much more. This year's outstanding speaker lineup include Jacques Delari, Ph.D., world-renowned high-performance driving and life coach, Jeff Braun, a race engineer with a history at Core Racing and IMSA, Ross Bentley, top driving coach, author of world-renowned Speed Secrets and a fellow podcaster, and Dan Davis, retired director of motorsports, 
for Ford Motor Company. All of these incredible racing experts are past guests here on Cars Yeah. As an added bonus for Cars Yeah listeners, you'll get to join these speakers at the Friday night reception at the incredible LeMay Car Museum for free. That's right. It's a $50 value if you sign up by January 15th. What a deal. Go to Armadillo Racing's website and register. That's armadilloracing.com. All right, Ross, welcome back. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am. Let's go. Always. Uh, By the way, listeners, uh, Ross was on my show five years ago, December 17th, 2014. He was guest number 142. So I've talked to a few people since you were last year. I cannot believe how many of these shows that you actually do. Like you mentioned that I did a podcast that I I did a podcast for two and a half years every single week. Uh, But a couple months ago, I I just uh, I got so much on the go that I had to say, you know, I got to take a little break from this for a little while. Yeah. How you do it. I I just can't (laughs) imagine. I guess it's tenacity, perseverance, stubbornness, uh, insanity. Uh, all mixed into a little batch. Sometimes I don't believe the number of people I've talked to either, and it's getting a little bad here. Maybe my age is showing. People will say, well, have you had so-and-so on your show? And I have to stop and go, ooh, I got to check that. So uh, yeah, well, I appreciate it. Uh, it's a fun venue, and it's a great way to get to know people and share some things. So tell our listeners, Ross, a little bit about you and your business before I jump into the questions. Well, you know, really, I guess I, I, I've always said that I have two passions in life, driving and helping other people drive better than they currently do. You know, whether that's on the street, you know, that's not really my main focus, although I've done that in the past. But, uh, you know, I love the whole high performance and race driving world. And, and uh, you know, I get as much of a kick out of helping another driver drive well as I do from driving myself. And I still, you know, I I, I just raced at the Thunder Hill 25-hour race uh, last month, and I still love it just as much as ever. But I just get this massive kick out of helping somebody else get that same aha moment of, you know, if I just release the brakes here and the car rotates in the corner, I can get back to power and the car squirts out of the corner. Like that, that... I love it. And I love it when I help somebody else feel that same thing. So, and I just, uh, I keep looking for new and different ways to help people learn how to be better drivers. So, you know, when I started vintage racing years ago, the first book that somebody who wasn't a vintage racer and had been racing, in fact, uh, the late Bruce Levin, uh, he's up here in the Pacific Northwest. We lost him a few years ago, but you probably knew of him. Yeah, He was a racer. Of course, he raced and ran very successful Porsche racing teams back in the days of the 962s and 935s. I mean, he ran with all the greats, Yeah, drove himself and so forth. He gave me your book. Speed I didn't Secrets. know he did. Yeah. yeah. He said, you need to read this book if you're going to be a race car driver, Mark. And we all know Bruce was a little bit of a character, uh, maybe a lot of a character, but that made him special. Uh, but yeah, that's what, what introduced me to Ross uh, Bentley and the things. And I, I remember reading your book thinking, wow, I mean, there's just so much stuff in here. How am I, how am I going to apply all this? Um, I guess I should have probably hired you to be a coach. I might have been a lot quicker <laughs> around the track. But uh, I think it's great what you've done and the fact that you've learned how to wrap your passion into what you do. And you're still doing it to this day. I think it's great. You know, a new question that I asked my guests that I didn't ask you when you were on the show way back when, when I was a newbie podcaster is tell our listeners something about yourself that most people don't know about Ross. You know, that's a tough question. Cause I said, <laughs> you know, you said you maybe asked me that question. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's, yeah, it, yeah. it's tough. Partially why I, I say it's so difficult is my life is fairly public. Oh, <laughs> it, yeah. it, you know, like I keep, you know, I'm out there and I'm talking about everything I do. So there's not a lot other than, you know, Earlier this year, or well, earlier this past year, 19, 2019, uh, I finally got a chance to do something that I've always wanted to do, and that is learn to fly helicopter. What? So I'm about halfway through getting my helicopter's license. I've, oh my gosh! I gotta, I gotta find some more time this year to to finish that up. But that's uh, that was sort of the first thing that came to mind. But then I kind of went, well, you know, big deal, you know. So, well, sure. and, and I've actually it's a shared huge that deal. <laughs> I, I've shared that with some other people, but. You know, maybe the one thing that people don't realize about me, and and maybe some people do, but you know, when I go around the country and I, you know, and I go be at Andy's, you know, the Armadillo seminar, and I'll be standing up in front of a group of a hundred and whatever number of people, and I love doing that because I'm sharing my passion. But what the people don't realize is I am probably the most introverted person they've ever met in their life. 
while I love sharing my passion up in front of a group of people, at the end of the day, I got to go be by myself to get my energy back. So there's something that I think it surprises people because of how much I do in the public that I, when I say I'm an introvert, they go, no, no, you're not. I'm like, yeah, I sure am. Well, do you find that, and I, you know, I, I get invited and I do a lot of keynote uh, speaking, I spoke this uh, New Year's at the Porsche banquet that they have every year. I was invited by Doug Andresian to be the keynote speaker and get up in front of, you know, almost 300 people and try to motivate them or say some things that doesn't bore them to death um, or they have their face down in their phones. I always try to, and, and I spoke at Andy's event last year. He was so nice. And if you, I don't know if you remember, but this time last year when he had his event, we were, had the biggest snowstorm we'd ever had here. Yeah. And I have to say, just getting, I'd flown in from shooting uh, some sh- TV shows of mine, getting from the airport home was impossible. And then getting to his event was impossible. On top of it, I was deathly ill with a high temperature and, uh, wow. and then having to get up in front of people and be enthusiastic. But I know what you mean. It it does kind of suck some stuff out of you. But I always, I never say no when someone asks me to speak in front of people because it pushes you out of your comfort zone and it teaches you something every time, don't you think? Absolutely. And I would say, I mean, like in school, I was a kid that, you know, if I had to speak in front of two people, I would be sick to my stomach, you know, and I would stammer and stumble and I, you know, I could not do it. And racing forced me to do that. And I, I, I can remember the day that, you know, I had won a race and it was a fairly big, geographically, it was a big race, you know, it was a pr- uh, professional race, you know, internationally it wasn't, but it was a, it was a bigger race and I'd won it. And I was actually invited to go onto the, onto a sports talk show, TV talk show that oh, evening. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was the kind of thing that was like, wow, you know, TV cameras and everything. And I went, if I can win a race, Talking to a guy on camera, it's a piece of cake. And it really, it was kind of a, uh, kind of one of those aha moments for me where, you know, do I get nervous? Absolutely to this day I do. But I, I relate it to, you know, drivers, you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable to be really fast. If you're always just comfortable, you're not really pushing the limits. And, and, and I find that, you know, if I get asked to go and, you know, to stand and talk about driving, I could do that with my eyes closed in a way. But sometimes, you know, somebody will say, you know, I want you to talk about something a little bit broader than that. And it's like, well, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I'm doing it because I like that feeling of being uncomfortable now. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great way to put it. I was running when I was racing Formula Junior, my Lotus 18 Formula Junior, Dick Buckingham, who was then running Sovereign, yeah, uh, the racing group up here. He had a little Jolus. He was a faster car than mine. He was a faster driver than me. And I remember one day he came up and he said, Mark, he goes, you know, you can go around the track a lot faster. And, and you know, Dick was kind of a blunt guy, you know. Yeah. And and I knew him a little bit, but I thought, wow, that's pretty rude of him to say. You know, he just told me I was slow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, which I was. And uh, but I didn't want to admit it. And uh I said, Okay, well, tell me how. And he said, Well, you gotta get uncomfortable. And it his his voice just popped in when you said that word, because he said, You gotta get uncomfortable. Yeah. You got to learn to brake later, get on the gas quicker. And so he goes, I just want, and he gave me some techniques to try. And you know what? The first time I did it during a practice, I cut like a second and a half off my best time. Yeah. Just it, with those tips, little tips. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, there are, and, and, and there's nothing wrong to, with going to the track and driving comfortable. But if you really want to get that last little bit, you have to get slightly uncomfortable. And for a while, you're uncomfortable being uncomfortable. But if you do it enough, eventually you become so comfortable being uncomfortable that you're striving for that. That's what you want. You're craving, like, I want to get uncomfortable. You know, you see these, you know, extreme uh, athletes, extreme sport athletes, you know, they're, whether they're jumping out of planes without uh, parachutes or, yeah. you know, yeah. rock climbing, free solo, that Alex Honnold guy. I mean, oh, gosh, yeah. you know, like, that guy freaks me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but you know that, like he's not comfortable unless he is uncomfortable. Exactly. Yeah. It it builds a tremendous confidence. And I think that's the golden nugget you dropped for our listeners here. Learn to get uncomfortable. No matter what you do, do something you've never done. Step out of your comfort zone. Say yes to things you de- you definitely wouldn't have said yes to and try them because the more you do them, the more confident you get. And it just leads to some tremendous opportunities. 
You know, I always ask my guests for a mantra or a success quote, some kind of saying that has meaning for you. Maybe for you, it's a saying you share with the drivers that you coach. Is there a specific saying or mantra or quote that's been a part of your life? Well, one that uh, I guess relates a little bit more to sort of my business side of what I've done and things, but uh, you know, it, it's it's it applies to racing and race teams and stuff like that. But uh, you know, I, I like to to say to people, there are problem sol- or problem identifiers and problem solvers. Which one do you want to be? <laughs> you know, I just had this talk with somebody. I do a little mentoring for a couple people, and it's when a gentleman was having some challenges with some people that report to him. And I said, you know, it's one thing to identify a problem. It's quite another to do something about it. Yeah. And it's a simple concept, but a lot of people, ah, they've got all these issues, but they don't act. And I think, you know, for me, it's sort of, I had heard that, I can't remember where I heard that from, but I'd heard it and I kind of went, well, again, that's what driving is all about. You know, there are some drivers that get so focused on the, I miss the apex. And another driver is, Okay, I missed the apex. I'm going to deal with the next lap, and and, and I think that's uh, you know people in business. I think some people just naturally tend to zoom in on and focus on the problem, and they get so caught up in that. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That they stop thinking about well, what's the solution. And well, I think race drivers yeah. are really good at well, let's go find a solution to that. Exactly. I always used to say, don't say the word problem. Say challenge. Challenge. Yeah. And it's the same on the track. And I I think that's why in, in, I would assume you would agree with this. When you listen to professional drivers like Formula One drivers, top level tier drivers, after the race, they're being interviewed and all they want to talk about is the next race. Yeah. Like, I'm done with that. I already did that. I, yeah. I'm, I'm already thinking about next week. Same with professional athletes, pro football players. You know, we're on to the next game now. We already did that. So. I- I'm not going to dwell on the things that went wrong. I'm going to focus on how I'm going to win the next game. I just I uh, just saw a quote uh, from Bill Belichick, the Patriots mm-hmm. coach, and and I can't remember the exact wording on it. But somebody asked him something about you know what's your next big what's what's the bucket list uh, thing that you want to accomplish in your life, and his answer was a really good practice this afternoon. Uh-huh. And yeah. it's like all that matters is the next thing for him. And, you know, it's not some big wild thing, but it's just like, let's get through the next practice and make it the best practice ever. And I thought, that's, yeah. you know, talk about being in the moment too. Yeah. And focusing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, tell us what has you, you know, we're in a new year here. 2020, can't believe where's our life going, right? It's speeding by as yeah, fast as yeah. our racetrack. It's, it's a new decade, 2020. What has you excited and fired up about 2020 with speed secrets in your business? Everything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, you know, we mentioned the the seminar, the Ar- Armadillo seminar. I love doing those things. I'm doing the one with Andy here. There's a, a couple of high-performance driver education, HPDE instructor summits, one in Road Atlanta and one in Indianapolis uh, coming up uh, February 22nd, 23rd in, in, in Indy. And I love doing those. I'm, I'm going to a couple of you know, a few car club events this year where I get to go in and work with drivers of, you know, whether they're novices, just their first time at the track, or they've been doing it for 20 years. I love the interaction, the engaging with drivers of all different levels and instructors. So I really, really love that. And, you know, a few years ago, help uh, start the Motorsport Safety Foundation's High performance driving instructors uh, certification pro- program, and that's been really re- rewarding and challenging because people people don't like change, but it's been really rewarding to see that thing growing and and really starting to get some legs this year. So that that's exciting. You know, this past year I started writing for Road and Track, which Road and Track was that magazine that I started reading when I was a little kid, and it's kind of like you know. We were talking a little bit that you know print magazines are it's it's a tough it's a tough business these days, but it's it it just feels like it's an it's an honor to write for Road and Track. When I think about Peter Egan, the you know, oh, the, yeah, some of the greats, Henry Meany, like way back when, and you know, like all these great writers uh, at Road and Track, and it's like, wow, I get to be in Road and Track. That's and, cool. and 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 I love writing. But Road and Track is pushing me to be a way better writer. Good for you. Well, congratulations. 
on that. Yeah, a magazine that's been around forever. And uh, especially for your industry, it's perfect. So yeah, it's like finally getting that car you always wanted or meeting that person. The fact that you get to contribute to that. And I tell you, you touched on something, Ross. I do a lot of keynote speeches for companies and organizations. I mentioned the one with the Porsche Club. Uh, I gave the similar kind of talk last year at Andy's event. And the main thing about my talk is what I've learned after, in this case, 1,468 <laughs> conversations. Yeah. And it's really the secret sauce to life. It's the secret to a happy life. And that is, we are happiest when we are giving to others. And it's really that simple. And the fact that you've been doing that for so long means that you've discovered the secret sauce to life, whether you realize it or not. It really is what makes us human beings happy at the end of the day. A lot of people, it takes them their whole life to figure that out. Some people figure it out much earlier, but uh, you definitely have dialed into that little secret sauce to a happy life. So congratulations to that. Yeah. That cool. I, yeah. I, I, I know that there are times where, you know, for whatever reason, what I'm working on or something like that, I'm not, I'm not able to give enough. And, 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 I, and I get anxious. It's like, I gotta, yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go help somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you figured it out. Let's yeah. take a short break and say thank you to our sponsors and we'll be right back. Edelbrock has been the name in automotive performance since 1938. Edelbrock designs and builds thousands of the finest automotive performance products right here in the USA for both street and track. From their AVS2 carburetors to V6 superchargers, if it's more power you crave, Edelbrock delivers. Let's talk superchargers. Whether it's an application-specific system or a universal fit, their precision-made assemblies come in multiple stages for a wide variety of makes and models. Their V6 superchargers are dyno-tested and ensure the perfect fit and maximum horsepower torque Plus added boost. You'll get huge power gains. I mean huge power gains. Quality construction you can trust and backed by decades of knowledge, Edelbrock is a brand that provides you with proven performance. And I've got a deal for you. This January 2020, you can get 10% off, 10% off if you use the code CARSYA at checkout. Just go to edelbrock.com and use CARSYA, all one word, at checkout and get 10% off. Tell them Mark at CARSYA sent you. That's edelbrock.com, checkout code CARSYA for your 10% off. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah. And I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at com. You take care of your cars. But who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy, too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. All right, we are back, Ross, and uh, I asked you this question before, but I'm sure it's changed since. I asked all my guests about 
sharing a huge challenge or even a big failure that they faced in their life along the way. It isn't so much about drumming up those terrible times. It's more about what was the learned lesson from that experience so you could go forward in a positive way. So kind of take us to one of those moments in, in time and tell us, tell us how you worked through that. I don't know whether I've actually worked through it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still working on it. Yeah, yeah me, t- me too. <laughs> I mean, I would say the biggest challenge that I have had, uh, and well, there's, I guess, two, but they're related. So the biggest challenges that I've had are, you know, people talk about a, you know, a balance in your life. And I love what I do so much that I constantly work. You know, I keep telling myself, okay, this is a year I'm going to, you know, take, give myself more time to do the things that I want to do. You know, I'm going to spend more time. I want to finish getting my helicopter pilot's license, you know, but I, 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 I get going on things and then, you know, I've got a client that says, Hey, you know, let's go here and let's go there. And I end up doing those things before I do those other things. And so I, I would find that the I, getting this balance in my life of what doing what's good for me personally, giving myself time to re-energize and just pushing through is, is something that I really struggle with. And it kind of related to that is for many years, and this is one that I've gotten way better at, but for many years, I had a difficult time charging people money for what I do mm. because I just looked at it as, well, I'm having fun doing this. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I can't believe I would charge somebody if you do something that I enjoy. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, like I understand. After so many years of working, paying, and then driving cars for nothing, and then when I finally got paid to drive race cars, it was like, like I almost felt guilty, you know. And then with the coaching and some of the training I do, it's like, really, I get paid to do to do this too. And I, you know, I've struggled with that. And somebody said something to me a few years ago that kind of really help with this is it was along the lines of one of the great things about getting older is that with each year you become more valuable to your clients because of the experience you've gathered and they're like think about everything you've learned in the past year and that experience and how you can pass it on to your to your clients you have now become more valuable in fact every single year you should raise your rates which I've not done but 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 I've gotten better at accepting the fact that I provide value, therefore, it's only fair that I get compensated for that. Right. You have a lot of master's degrees under your belt, and there's a cost for those because you spend all that time learning those things. But I understand what you're saying. Uh, It's a very common uh, challenge for people that are really enjoying what they're doing. I'll never forget the first time I worked for 11 years in advertising before I got involved with uh, Griot's Garage, where I worked for 20 years to help build that business. And I was we were at a photo shoot. It was just awesome. And I stopped at one point and I went, I'm getting paid to do this? Yeah. How can that be? I mean, I, I was, I became ecstatic, you know, be, I, I thought, because I was surfing a lot at the time and I thought, man, pro surfers, that must be how they feel. Yeah. They get paid to get in the water and surf. So, but I think you're right. You sh- we should not, nobody listening should diminish the value of their time and input. And I do some coaching and mentoring and paid consulting for companies. and. Um, I come off of that time and I realized, wow, I mean, that, that was somewhat easy for me to spot the problems they're having because I've been there, done that. And then you go, I'm going to charge it for that. It was so easy. But then as my wife reminds me, how many years did it take you living that pain Yeah, to learn how to get out of that pain? That's that's exactly it. They're paying for, pay, paying yeah. for our experience. So Yeah, you're paying for your pain. So yeah. uh, then I don't feel quite as bad, but uh, very well said. I love that. Let's go back in time a little bit here, Ross. You raced cars, serious race car driver. I mean, you ran with the the greatest. What was a pivotal moment in your life when you think back then that you said, this is what I want to do. I want to be around racing. Well, my dad took me to a race when I was five years old. And I think that night I said to my parents, I'm going to be a race driver. You know, I was five. Yeah. You know, at five, we say a lot of. You know, we all want to be race car drivers. I want to. I want to be a. I want to be an astronaut. Astronaut, or, yeah. You know, fireman. You, yeah. you see the garbage truck going down the yeah. street. I want to be a garbage man. You know, yeah, like that uh, looks like fun. Yeah, but I wanted to be a race driver, and you know, I always joke that I never grew up. You know, I just that was always what I wanted to do. But uh, you know, things happened. Uh, I've actually been in the last couple of years asking people why they became involved with the sport and you know people go well what about you and it's like you know uh, i remember the day my friend and i walking down the street 
in a yellow Lotus Europa, came down the street, went around a 90 degree corner like it was on a slot car track. Yeah. And I remember just kind of like stopping and going, wow, wow what just happened? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and then, you know, a friend's older brother giving me a stack of road and track magazines. So I just, you know, I sat down and I became a reading fanatic because of all those road and track magazines. You know, I read all those stories about Jimmy Clark and the four GT forties at, uh, at Le Mans and, you know, yeah. I mean, all of that stuff. And it just did, did those are the things that I guess took that five-year-old thing and f- fed. <laughs> and you're still a five-year-old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think it's cool. Well, yeah. you've raced uh, a tremendous number of uh, different cars and so forth. And I always ask people about their first very special vehicle. Now, since you've been on the show before, I'm going to ask you something a little bit different here with all the cars you've raced throughout your life. And we can even come up to what you raced last year. Um, what car still stands out for you that you just went, wow, can't believe I got to drive that. It would be the Indy, Indy cars. You know, uh, oh, when yeah. I, when I raced Indy cars, I was with a very low budget team, the lowest budget team. I was always in a, you know, older car. That was when every team had new cars every single season. And I was usually a one, two year old car and an engine package. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't the, the most competitive package, but you know, when you're in a car that weighs 1500 pounds, it has between eight, and 900 horsepower, you know, it's generating, I don't know, 5,000 pounds of downforce at 180 miles an hour, you know, so generating G loads of over four G's, four and a half G's. There is nothing like that. There is just, you know, to this day, if I'm at an IndyCar race and I just, you know, standing on a corner and I'll watch an IndyCar kind of squirt out of a corner and I go, that's the part that I miss. Yeah. I've had a lot of racers on my show since you were first on the show, hundreds. And I've talked, had many that, including Ari Leyendijk and others, uh, Bobby Rahal and some, you know, heavy hitters that raced. And one, I remember him talking to me about the first time he went to Indy to run and he was coming through corners and, he was doing the last thing you're supposed to do is lift. And the coach or the owner, you come in and go, you can't lift through there. And he goes, how could you expect me to keep my foot down? I, the car won't stay on the track. And he yeah. said, it will. You have to trust it. Yeah. And then he said the first time he did it, it was like, oh, my gosh, how did that happen? Yeah. I've got to think that was the feeling that you experienced. For sure. And I think everyone that, that has that, you know, there's not that many people in the, in the history of the world who's had that experience. But to go through that and you, you know, you kind of, there's this disbelief. There's just like, that cannot happen, but it just happened. So let me go and make it happen again. And for sure, getting through that, because the first time you do it, it's like, no, it can't be done. It can't yeah, be done. It can't be done. Hell, it can't be done. Think- well, it can be done. And then there's a, well, somebody else could do it. And then there's a, well, I think I could do it. And then there's a, I did it, which means I can do it again. So you kind of work through that. And it's, I think one of the things that, you know, when I see older race drivers, you know, one of the things I know that we all have in common is kind of open to, like, if somebody just said, you know, Martians have just landed, there's a lot of people who will go, yeah, forget that. I think a lot of race drivers go, that could happen. Yeah, sure. (laughs) I've done crazier things than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Well, I don't think I asked you this question because I don't think I was asking it when you were on the show. It's something that kind of popped up in the early first, second year of Cars, yeah. And that is, and I'm going to twist it a little bit. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself manifested as a vehicle. And for you, Ross, I'm going to say a race car. What would Ross Bentley be and why? Hmm, as a race car. How do you identify with, like, what car do you identify with, with your personality, kind of guy you are? Again, not what you want to be. We, of course, all would love to be a Ferrari F1 or some, you know, uh, McLaren or something like that. I think I would be a, you know, perhaps like a, a, an IMSA GTLM car, a GT car that competes in endurance races because I'm, I'm around to the end, you know, there have been faster drivers in the world, but I think of myself as being a pretty smart driver and I'll be there at the end. And most times I'll be ahead of others because I think that way. And, 
you know, so I, I think that kind of a, you know, GT3, GTLM, super fast, technical, but super reliable and always there. And that's how, that's how I, I guess I'm not saying that I'm all those things, but so there is a little bit of, I, I'd like to be those things, but I, but I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a Formula One car. Well, you know, it's funny because one of your uh, co-speakers at Andy's uh, Armadillo Racing Seminar coming up here, uh, Jeff Braun, of course, who you know, uh, Jeff's also been on the show. And his answer to that question was very similar in the tone that you gave. He, he was a Porsche 962. Uh-huh. Uh, so very much, you know, endurance racing car, one of those cars that just gets out there and does it over and over and over and over and over again. But uh, yeah, the, the, the IMSA GTLM cars, oh, magical, magical cars. And what an era. What a, yeah. what a great group. So nice answer to that. All right, we are entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions, ask you for some very quick answers. Here we go. What's one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your successes over the years? Always deliver. Yeah, absolutely. How about if I could arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would it be? I've asked other people this question, then they turn it around on me and I say, Jackie Stewart. (laughs) Jackie (laughs) Stewart, you know, he just, uh, he, he... he understood driving and promoted it so well and safety and everything. I, I just, yeah. I, I would love to pick his brain. You know, I've been trying to get him on this show. It's been very hard to, to get <laughs> yeah. him. Uh, almost impossible, but I haven't given up. But I'll tell you what, I got to sit next to him for about a half hour at Pebble Beach Concours. I had Denise McCluggage on one side of me. Wow. We lost her a few years ago, but she has been a guest on the show. And Jackie, and I was sitting between those two going, Oh my gosh, who do I talk to first? Yeah. I mean, these are two great legends. And I did get to kind of have his ear for a little bit and a fascinating gentleman. Um, and of course, what he did in racing and how he helped people. When you think about you helping people, uh, how he helped racers try yeah. to be safer is absolutely phenomenal. So uh, maybe one day yeah. someone out there will tap him and go, hey, you really should call Mark and be on a show. So there you go. We'll see. Hey, did you ever get him on your podcast when you had it? No, no, I haven't. Uh, I had the same kind of experience a few year, bunch of years ago, having a chance to spend uh, some time with him at a conference in Toronto. But uh, yeah, he's he's an amazing person. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's the best racing advice you've ever, I won't say given because you've given so much, you've ever received? Well, it's part of the advice that I give every other driver, but I, I, I think it was given to me and I don't know by who, but uh, there is always more. You know, if you've just put the car in the pole, broken the track record, lapped the field in the race six times, my my response would be, there's always more. Let's go. Let's go find more. Yeah, absolutely. How about a resource? Is there a website, an app, a supplier, a person or some resource out there that's a go to for you on a regular basis that you could share? I'm one of these guys that's I'm kind of. I go to a lot of different uh, websites to find out what the news is going on. And, you know, I'm kind of bouncing around from that stuff just to get all the latest because I need to be connected. But I still I go back to road and track because I love the writing in road and track. And I'll uh, throw something else in there for our listeners. Of course, SpeedSecrets.com. There's a but, great resource. For yeah. You, so. you know, like I, I, <laughs> I, I always say that my speed secret thing is the most complete resource for drivers. So I, hopefully that's that's my goal anyways. Oh, I think you've done that. And I'll remind listeners, uh, as far as books go, uh, you've got to go and check out all of Ross's books, Speed Secrets books. There's a whole bunch of them. If you like to drive fast, if you want to get into racing, you're already into racing and there's so much to learn there. Uh, it's really fantastic. Even if you just have spirited drives, I'm not condoning racing on the street by any means, but if you like to drive a little fast out there, you can learn something from Speed Secrets. I'll put links to those books on Ross's show notes page here on the Cars yeah website. All right, Ross, we're almost there. Checkered flags out. I'm going to buy you a very cool collector car or vintage race car today. Something fun for you to have, but there are a few rules to the game since I'm writing the check. You can't sell it. You got to keep it. You have to drive it. No garage queens. But here's the kicker. It's the only one cool collector vehicle that you can have. So what can I buy you today? I can't remember what I said the last time when you asked me that question. I, I hope- yeah, I'll have to go back and look at what your answer was there. It's but, been a little while, five years. So Okay, yeah. well, then who cares then, right? I, <laughs> it, it's a Ford GT40. That uh, car yeah. just, uh, it's still the most beautiful car in the world. And it had such a big impact on my childhood and my 
passion for the sport that uh, that would be it. And fortunately, I've had a chance to drive a couple through the years. Um, nice. uh, yeah, they're just uh, yeah, awesome. Have you seen the new movie Ford versus Ferrari? I have. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, uh oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to say all good things about it, aren't I? But, uh, well, no, uh, you know, uh, here's the deal. You're deep into the sport. So you're going to be able to pick nitpick things that most other people wouldn't have any idea. So there's, there's all those factors that go with racing. And I get it with racing movies. Um, if you're really, in, if you are a racer, there's going to be stuff where you kind of roll your eyes and go, come on. It's Hollywood, but yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't expecting a documentary, but I was expecting ah. a little bit more realism in the in the actual racing. The part that bothers me the most, though, was the way they portrayed Leo Baby in the movie as a complete jerk, I believe is still alive and is sitting there going like he really was. Uh, a major contributor to Ford's program and the racing program in the 60s. It wasn't for him. And everything I've ever heard about him was he was a super nice guy and a good guy. And they just portrayed him as a really bad guy in that movie. And I kind of go, that's not right. I know yeah. Hollywood needs a bad guy in every movie, but right. make somebody up. I don't know. So Yeah, that's yeah. too bad. Well, yeah. um, I've not seen it yet. And I'm sure some folks are going, how can Mark Green not have seen that movie yet? But I haven't seen it yet. But I like asking the question. Uh, so when I go do see it, we'll see uh, what kind of thoughts come to my mind. But uh, Ford GT40, now there's a special car. Now, since you know so much about these cars, is there a particular one that you'd love? Because I remember being on the lawn at Pebble about four or five years ago when they had them all there. And I couldn't believe the range of, of differences in the cars. It kind of surprised me. Uh, but it was pretty outstanding to see all those uh, GT40s. Is there a particular one that kind of... Well, you go, that's the one. Well, I guess if if since you're buying, I might oh, as well yeah. have I might as well have the one that won the race in 1966. Oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're going to make this expensive for me, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You oh, asked. Gosh. Yeah. I know. I <laughs> yeah. know. I offered I now I got a pony up. All right. I'll get to work here on that little thing. That's why I keep buying lottery tickets for all my guests and all these cars they would love to have. Very nicely said. Uh what's the best way for our listeners to follow along with you? Speedsecrets.com. Uh, yeah, you know, easy. it's just every, every, everything there. And, you know, I mean, I, I will get back to starting my speed secrets podcast again. Um, I do plan to start that again up in, in 2020. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I write a lot and got weekly You're newsletters and, <laughs> and yeah. you know, I love it when people end up, uh, getting on my website and then learning about things that I do. And, you know, obviously there's all the social media stuff, Facebook yeah. and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. I'll remind our listeners. Go to SpeedSecrets.com. Check it out. Uh, Ross has a really nicely done weekly uh, blog that you can subscribe to. It's well worth the minimal cost uh, that's involved there. Uh, enjoy his writings and road and track and everything he does. We'll look forward to that podcast coming back. Are your podcasts uh, archived there so people can listen to past ones on your site? Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that shocks me about podcasts is how many times people go, you know, I just binged on, you know, the past, uh, wherever it was, 160 episodes or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah. when's the next 150 coming out? Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That, so, well, the, your, your audience awaits you, my friend. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, imagine having uh, 1,468 to binge on. I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I'll keep people busy for a, a long drive across. The United States, unless it's those uh, two guests I just had that won the Cannonball and set a new insane record for that. I can't even believe they did what they did, but pretty cool. Well, I'll remind our listeners, you can meet Ross uh, at this year's 25th anniversary Armadillo Racing Seminar that Andy Collins is putting on. It takes place February 8th in Tacoma. Just go to armadilloracing.com. You can sign up. There's a cool event, and I'll be at that event the Friday night before that Saturday seminar. It's a little uh, LeMay event. You can sign up and go to that if you want. Uh, paid to attend that, but uh, check it out at armadilloracing.com. You can meet uh, Ross and uh, Jeff Braun and uh, a couple other great people that are going to be guests here very soon on the show. Um, Jacques Delara, who's been the guest uh, on the show before, he'll be on actually tomorrow, I think. So very, very cool. Ross, thanks for being so generous today and coming back to visit me here on Cars Yeah, We got to keep get together. You know, we live right over the sound. We got to get together for lunch one of these days. My gosh, it's ridiculous. We will do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. So just wave to me over the hill here. Or I want to thank you for and appreciate you for sharing your experiences with my listeners until you and I talk again, my friend. I'll see you at the track or down the road. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate this. It's been fun. Absolutely. It's always fun to catch up. 
Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars Yeah TV show? It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah podcast guests, and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah TV is available on Mav TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find Mav TV on Direct TV. Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!